Nothing like a night of hockey and nothing like getting some hockey bets from the Hockey Squirrel. That's right, it's Tuesday. Welcome into another episode of Winning Bets. I'm Jason Mattis, of course. He is the Hockey Squirrel. How's it going there, man? Hey, not too bad. I uh, hit a couple of heavy favorites yesterday on the puck line, which is something I don't normally do. Uh, I had the wild minus one and a half over on my channel, and I went to the game actually. Very, very fun. Uh, seven to four high scoring game there. Matt Boley scored a hat trick, so that was fun to see in person. And um, had the Leafs on the on the puck line as well. And uh, so a couple of, couple of winners there. But what you'll notice is, is now after that All-Star break, it's a lot of heavy favorites seemingly uh really a lot of minus 200 minus 300s which is uh getting kind of ridiculous on these money lines i think you know the, the books know who these good teams are they kind of have them pegged and uh so it's either trying to find some underdog value or, or maybe we're looking at you know some some totals as we kind of start to finish out the year here all right well hey like i always said we'll lean on you to kind of navigate us through it you know the one bet i couldn't find last night i was looking around the sports that- books I couldn't find on Valentine's Day hockey squirrel to go to a hockey game. Of course you were at a hockey game last <laughs> night. It was Valentine's Day. Where else would you be, man? Exactly. It's only fitting, right? That's only uh, fitting. I dressed, up the, I dressed up the girlfriend in a nice Minnesota Wild jersey, and uh, we went at center ice and uh, had a lot of fun. So it was good. Awesome. Good night. Yeah. Glad you went to the game. Glad you cashed the bet. And glad the home team got a win for us. All right, what are you going to do for the audience here of winning bets today as we look for to cash some hockey bets today? Well, among the money lines that are unplayable, I have found one that is a late night game that I really do like that uh, I think for multiple reasons, the the public will be all over the Edmonton Oilers here. And I'm going to take the LA Kings on the money line currently at a minus 110 as uh, there is value as far as the data models go. Uh, I'm finding what I think is going to be value from a uh scheduling standpoint and i think from what the public is going to do with the line and you can kind of see some of that already uh last night this game opened for the la kings far too high in my opinion at minus 140 and it's already been bought all the way down to minus 110 so that tells me uh that the public would be on the oilers right bringing that line down at least um you know that's the way i interpret that and so at a 53 and a half percent, basically, um, you know, whether that's at home versus away or just in the last 10 games straight up uh, for the L.A. Kings, that leaves us with a little bit of value there at minus 110. Or, um, you know, I guess you could call it around fair. But the thing that I'm really liking from a scheduling standpoint, which I had mentioned, is uh, after the All-Star break, this is going to be basically... Uh, five games in seven days, I believe, for the um, for the Edmonton Oilers, which they played on February 8th, which looking back is uh, a week ago. And so one, two, three, four, five games in a week uh, in, in seven days. So the LA Kings, I don't think they've even played since the All-Star break. So they're going to be nice and rested. I think they've had basically two weeks off playing their last game February 2nd against the Red Wings. So um perhaps could you make the argument that it's too much rest which is actually a real argument that uh you know there could be potential rust with the players and whatnot but uh i don't look at it that way as i think it's just kind of a bad scheduling spot for the oilers here um playing a lot of games and uh being on the road they played in san jose last night won a three to nothing game shut out the sharks and uh you know, I think, again, the public will see things like that and, and say, oh, you know, the Oilers are getting back to what the Oilers are. And that's scoring goals. And that's McDavid and Dreisaitl and Pugliarvi and, and all these uh, these high scoring guys. But what I'm seeing is really a very full roster against another very full roster, but uh, perhaps tired. And again, L.A. to me has been a very kind of flying under the radar type team this year kind of dark horse in that realm of uh you know i i think perhaps they could make a run they would be a tough opponent to beat uh you know in the playoffs and whatnot they have the back end that can defend they have two goaltenders in cal peterson and jonathan quick that are uh absolutely great i i think this team top to bottom is very strong and we know that 
there's some struggles in the back end with the uh, with the uh, Oilers, right? With the uh, not only the the defense, but especially the goaltending. And so while they are quite the offensive threat, uh, especially as it pertains to the power play, um, I just think it's not a great spot for them really all the way around, whether that's traveling, whether that's the line, uh, the scheduling. And on Roto-Wire, I see Cal Peterson's confirmed. To me, it doesn't particularly matter whether it's Quick or Peterson. Uh, daily face-off here doesn't show any confirmation of a goaltender quite yet, but I'm fine with either way that goes. So uh, at a minus 110, I think the LA Kings at home is the way to go here today. All right, so that's what we'll do. Then we'll go ahead and take the LA Kings. We did not get it at minus 110, unfortunately. We got it at minus 113. So we'll go ahead and roll with the FanDuel price at minus 113. So that's what it is, LA Kings. Yeah. All right, you know yep, what? Absolutely. My favorite... Minus 113 is fine. So, oh, go ahead. Minus, minus 113 is good? Okay, good. All right, well, you yeah, know it's, it's fine. Old man right here won't see the end of this game. You said this is a late game on the West Coast. I'm going to look forward to waking up with money in my pocket <laughs> thanks to the Hockey Squirrel, my man. Why don't you tell everybody yeah. on the audience here what you have going on at HockeySquirrel.com? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, as always, I have my daily videos uh, that I do one free pick or a couple free picks here on YouTube every day and then uh, additional bets over at my membership um, $60 a month gets you the educational content, the articles, the, uh, notification emails and whatnot. I do a separate YouTube video or uh, not YouTube video. I do a separate video for, uh, members along with written picks every day on the website. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, just basically what I do here, but more in depth and, and more picks. So, uh, if you like the content and you're interested in, in more of that, then, uh, that's available at the website for you. Get on over to the Hockey Squirrel. You can find the hockeysquirrel.com, his Twitter information, and his YouTube information all in this video description. All right, LA Kings tonight at minus 113 on that money line. Thanks for the winner. We look forward to seeing you back here on Thursday. (laughs) Yes, sir. Thanks for watching till the end. I'm Jason Mattis. Any love you can show by giving me a like, a subscription, or a comment, or even just share this video is very much appreciated. And don't forget to turn on your notifications to increase your chances of locking in the same odds as I talked about today. And check out my other great videos in these corners.